So Ubuntu 20.10 has been released and with it they've released a Raspberry Pi version of Ubuntu desktop. So I've already created a video where I've been playing with the beta version of the server image but this is actually the full desktop environment with desktop applications that you can use as an alternative to Raspberry Pi OS. So in this video this is my first go with it so I'm just going to go through it and show you how to install it and what it's like as a an initial first look at Ubuntu 20.10 on the Raspberry Pi. As you can see the Ubuntu desktop image has been added to the Raspberry Pi imager so it's just a case of running the Raspberry Pi imager, choosing the particular operating system, looking for the desktop version and note it says Raspberry Pi 4 and putting in your SD card and installing to that. Take a while to download and install it and then we'll be ready to pop that into the Raspberry Pi and have a go. So here's my Raspberry Pi 4. This is the 8 gigabyte RAM version. Just pop my SD card in there that I've just flashed with the Ubuntu image. And I've got it connected to an X-Doc to give me the screen and keyboard capability. And if I connect the power, fingers crossed it should boot. And there we go, it's going through the boot process. So it's resizing the partition. And now booting into Ubuntu. It's certainly taking longer than the Raspberry Pi boot process, but we've got a much uh, more powerful power thing. So just go through the initial system configuration, choose a language. So although the keyboard here I've actually got is a US keyboard because it's the next stop, I'm going to use the UK keyboard as that's what I normally use. And then connect to my wireless network. It's detected where I am. My nearest time zone anyway. And then set up a username. So I'm going to change my computer's name. And then give it a password.
it looks like it's going to continue with some further installation this is taking some time to run to complete the install as with the other fast forward sections this is running at 10 times the normal speed It's taken just over 30 seconds to load the desktop. I'm just going to skip connecting to online accounts. Let's take the defaults. And so there's some examples of the software, GIMP and Inkscape. Chromium is a web browser which is similar to Chrome, or a, it's, it's basically Chrome without the Google branding. And there's some of the applications. Just, Just wonder whether there's any Raspberry Pi um, specific tools. There's no like Raspberry config or anything like that, so it would just be the normal settings. So I'll have a look at how we can uh, set in remote access and then probably take it onto my other computer. At this point, I installed the OpenSSH server so that I could SSH remotely into the computer. That was done using sudo apt install openssh server. I then installed a VNC server to allow me to access the desktop environment remotely. I did try tight VNC as I've used that before, but that didn't work and so I instead used X11 VNC which allows you to control the actual desktop and that needs to be run after logging in and that's installed using sudo apt install X11 VNC. I'm going to try using X11 VNC I've installed that and see if that will allow me to connect remotely So it's asking for port number 5900, which is the standard. I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm going to go and connect the from my Ubuntu machine and see if I can connect. So it's asking for a password. I'll just set that up. So I've put a password in there. I'm also going to click on accept connections. Apply that. And OK. And to connect now, it's asked me about to check the identity. We can just continue that. I think that's because I've saved an old one. Not encrypted, that's fine. You can encrypt it using SSH, or there was an option, but don't need that at the moment. So I'm just going to log on to there. And there we are. So I to connect. So I did try using tight VNC, but um, didn't have much 
success with that so I've just gone for X11 VNC so this is something that you have to run actually on a logged in session so you have to log in first and then run it and then it allows you to use VNC to connect in unlike the one that's included on the Raspberry Pi OS or by default which is real VNC and that's normally a licensed product but that can allow you to connect without logging on to your PC directly first. So we can have a look through the software that's installed. There's a few of the standard stuff, calculator, calendar, G's a webcam application, document viewers. So you've got Firefox web browser, LibreOffice suite, which is really good. Uh, a few games, Shotwell image viewer, email client, Thunderbird, and pretty much that's it. So this is a standard Ubuntu desktop image. So uh, I mean, this is certainly a bit slower, or considerably slower. Then running the equivalent on Raspberry Pi OS, as you might ex expect, running the full GNOME desktop rather than the light desktop that's on Raspberry Pi OS. So, uh, and there's no HTOP isn't installed, so we can install that. So you can install it through Snap or through in through the usual app to install. Can use the the normal app to install. So the reason I'm running this is to have a look at things like memory usage, processor usage, and see how it's performing. This is something you've seen I've done already. When I first got this, this is the eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi four. I wanted to see how much memory it was actually using and back then I, I really struggled to get much above the, the four gigabytes so here we go we're running about one gigabyte of memory it does say you need the four gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4 to run Ubuntu I can well believe it when you start to run a few apps that it's going to need that extra memory. I still think the 8 gig might be a bit overkill, but uh, we'll have a look. So Processor-wise, it's ticking along. And let's see what applications we can do. So we've got Writer. Really just seeing what the feel of it is like. Uh, I'm not not going to overtax it, but see, it's it's not as quick as running Raspberry Pi OS, but there we go, and it's version seven of LibreOffice, which is the the latest current version, so that's quite nice. What else have we got? I think really the the main thing is you're going to have to start installing more apps. So if I go so we've got the Ubuntu software library that we can go to. As you can see, launching something like this is really using quite a lot of processing power from the Raspberry Pi. I mean, this is Ubuntu that I'm running this laptop on, but this is a, obviously much more powerful. This is an i7 laptop and it's very responsive. Running anything on the Raspberry Pi is going to be 
quite a bit slower. And I guess the, from the point of view of the Raspberry Pi, it's going to be a case of testing things whether you can use the programming libraries that are available for Raspberry Pi OS. I believe there was ports of these on an older version, so hopefully these have made it into the final version. This really is just my first time playing with this and see what it's like. While waiting for that, it's still be quite interesting. Um, if I uh, launch a window, I can have a look in Python, see what libraries are in Python. There isn't GPIO zero, so that's a shame. Uh, it doesn't mean there isn't a port or it isn't possible to get that version running, but it's not included in standard. However, if you're wanting to run it as a desktop machine, it looks like there's lots and lots of software install uh, available. Uh, for me, with my defaults is things like I would always install GIMP and the GNU image manipulation program, which is a very powerful photo editor that's this one here Ooh. I don't know what that was doesn't tell me what the problem was. Let me just uh, I wonder whether it's because that started. Well I wouldn't have thought so. Okay, so they graphical software installer didn't allow me to but I can just run it and install from the command line So that's installed now. And it looks to be launching fine. Go. So there's the GIMP installed. Used about 1.3 gig of RAM. So just running the OS and GIMP, but I haven't obviously loaded anything yet. Let's close that. So I just thought it might be worth trying to see if we can install GPIO Zero. Um, so just to install pip for Python first, so package installer for 
Python 3 modules. So that's installed pip and a load of other libraries as well. So now I can try loading, installing the module GPIO0. And now it's allowed me to import GPIO zero. So not able to do a full testing at the moment, um, but that looks promising. So what we've got here, we've got the first official release of Raspberry Pi version of Ubuntu, which is a Ubuntu 20.10. Uh, 20 uh, just released recently. So why would you want to use this? If you want a full 64-bit version of the operating system and you want to run a full desktop environment as you would on a Ubuntu laptop, then this may be for you. However, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4 with at least four gigabytes of memory on it. So that's one of the recent versions and it is a lot slower than running Raspberry Pi OS so if you would rather have Raspberry Pi OS because it's faster then that's a good reason to stick with that also the, the Raspberry Pi OS it's been around a while and it's got a lot of libraries very specifically for the Raspberry Pi it includes some commercial software that otherwise you might have to pay for, such as the Minecraft Pi Edition and the Wolfram and various other things like that. So there's your choice. At least it's another option if you're looking at an operating system to run the Raspberry Pi. And no doubt I will revisit this in future so please subscribe if you want to find out about it in more details in future videos thanks for watching